Nocturnal Wandering. When life hits you with the unexpected, you have two options, cower in the corner or run like hell. Though there's comfort in choosing one or the other for a short period, the payoff eventually fails. I'm not saying there were moments you didn't enjoy it, but there were certainly occurrences that kept you guessing. You'd go to Denny's, wander the aisles of Rocco's Pawn and Loan, and on nights when you were really out of sorts, you'd test out different soda and candy mashups at the Gas and Sip, pushing 500 samples to clerks and traveling patrons. Some nights, you'd even stand at the back near the lottery station doing crossword puzzles and call out the ones that stumped you. Rhymes with Kalamazoo! They'd answer, Mr. Magoo, but any form of face palming was frowned upon. The characters that came out of the woodwork in these hours and places, they were enough to leave anyone scratching their head, maybe even watching their back. Had you been shanked? No. Were you frisked? Yes. You came up with an escape plan. It wasn't as hard as you thought. There was some middle-of-the-night sort of grace that happens that you get at no other time of day and with the help of convenience store snacks and a Route 44. You ended up the guy ahead, mapping your own destiny and a path to victory. You'd converse like you knew them. You'd walk down a dark alley, and then all of a sudden, a jerk in a gray hoodie is lunging at you with a knife to your throat. I'm gonna gut you up real good, pretty boy. You kept your cool. I know you would, but you know something? I just found the perfect sugar rush at the gas and sip. Can I show you what it is? They studied you a second. Maybe even cocked their head sideways, giving you the once over. That was half the battle. The other was getting them to move past you and on to the soda fountain. If you played your cards right, you might even end up exchanging numbers. Whether you called each other back or not, it didn't matter. You'd run into each other again. It was your own little sleepless anonymous group. Whatever you had to do to quiet those racing thoughts. Sometimes it all felt hazy and blue. You were walking to your car, spotted a flyer on your windshield, and bartered with the guys offering to pave your driveway. Not for goods or services, but to let them practice fortune telling in the backseat of a Prius by a guy that went by Ned from 9 to 5 and Ted from 5 to 9. And that's when your feelings of inadequacy reduced. You felt normal. You didn't think about your fortune, good or bad, it was just fortune. And it was the wheeling and dealing that kept after that was the ride. You thrived, but as the nights escaped you, so did the peace. <laughs>